Okay, and here's the last of the uh, short videos I'm making on Adobe Spark. And this time it's to look at how to make an Adobe Spark video. So if I just go and find one to show you what they look like, okay, if I click on there, then these are all the little videos I've made so far. Some of them I'm just in the middle of doing, some I've actually made uh, um, some extensive stuff on, okay? Right, so if I just go into this one, and show you what it looks like. You can go through this, it's a tutorial that pops up every time you open it, but once you've done it once, you don't need it again, you can actually click, you know, don't show me this tutorial again. Right, this is what it looks like, and I'll show you how to get one of those in a moment. Uh, but basically what you're doing is just adding pictures as you go along. I just want to show you um, to demonstrate it for you. Here we go. Three quick ways of learning how Adobe Spark can help you with your teaching, learning and assessment. We're great at emphasizing the need for critical thinking in assignment work, but we must also be aware of creativity, communication and collaboration. Building on those first four C's of critical learning, we have the opportunity to build curiosity, confidence, caring and cooperation. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. All right, so I'll click the X to get out of this and I'll just go back to my main page again. So all you need to do is click on the plus sign, as you're so used to doing now, and say video. Call it whatever it is you want. So if I call this one health promotion, say next. Now, here are some, um, uh, some j just some ideas and suggestions for you. You don't have to use any of these. So if I go to the one called Teacher Lesson, you don't have to. You, you can just choose whichever one you want. These are just to give you some suggestions because I've chosen the one called Teacher Lesson. So you will see what happens now. It's given you the blank videos. But because this one's called Teacher Lesson, then it's suggesting on your first slide you might want to talk about an overview. Second slide, maybe a concept. Third slide, example. So if you'd gone into any of those others, they would just have different words here. But you don't have to follow those words, and they don't exist in reality. They'll disappear once you go into these. So all you need to do is um, decide what you're going to put in. You might already have a little video that you want to add, or you might want to add text. So let's say, um, okay, call this one the introduction. Right, that's put that word in. Now, if I click the plus again, I can either add a photo or a video. So if I go to this and say, find free photos, let's see what comes up for introduction. Oh, hello. Right, there you go. So there's my first slide done. Now, to um, change the size of it, supposing it wasn't showing terribly well, you can just click on this little pencil and you make you can make things bigger or smaller. Okay, but that's all you can do with this. So if I make it really small, look, it's just going there. So you can play around there. When it comes to putting your voice over, you just click this button here. It won't let me do it because I'm al already using the microphone to record this video. But when you click on that, it suggests that about 10 seconds per slide is fantastic. Once you get to 20, it's telling you, mm, you're going on a little bit long. When you get to 25 seconds, it's starting to warn you, and then it wants you to stop definitely by 30 seconds. So you can only have 30 seconds per slide. But if you've got something to say that's longer than 30 seconds, then you just carry it on over different slides and you'll never notice that there's a gap in between. OK, so if I just go to the second one, I can say, well, I'll put a photo in again. Um, just choose that one for argument's sake. And I'll say slide two. OK, right, there you go. And then I'd make the voiceover for that one. Now, whenever you want to listen back to what you've done, if you click this forward arrow, that will only just play the particular slide that you're on. Whereas if you press this arrow at the bottom, that takes you to the whole thing. Okay? Right. 
And you can notice now it's put music in already. So if you click on the button up here for music, you might decide you want music off or on. So you can choose off or on there. But I would suggest when you play it back, make sure that your voice is loud enough. Sometimes it doesn't seem to record terribly loud. So you might need to bring the level of the music down a bit. You can either add your own or there's a whole load listed here. And if you just click next to them like this. OK, so it's testing out the music for you. there so whatever the theme is that you're talking about you can choose different background music and don't worry it puts it right across the whole video for you without you having to do it more than once you just do it on one occasion and it would then oh, I like that one right so it puts it on right the way throughout for the theme you might decide on different colors look you can do all that sort of stuff okay or you want to change the uh, the image of it and again, when I go back to my first slide, it's now changed the whole background and it's changed the font size. So that's how you do these different things. OK, so you can play around and do that. So let me think of, have I covered all of this now then? Uh, right, any images you put in, when you scroll to the end, when you're moving down, you get right to the end. It's actually put the credits in for all the all the images you've used. You don't have to have those. When you click on the button, you can actually say hide credits and it would get rid of that slide for you. OK, so when you want to see the whole thing, you can just press that button. OK, there you go. And that's it. Now to download, you don't have to download, but if you want to download, it'll save it onto your machine as an MP4 file. So supposing you then want to do upload that into YouTube, download it to your machine here, and then you can upload it into your YouTube account. Okay? And that's it. Look, you can do layout, you can do themes, resize it. Because if you were making something only to go on Instagram, for example, and you think, well, people will access this on their phones, you might want to go for the square image. So you can do that and you can change all the music. And it's as simple as that. And just the same as what you've done in the past. When you click on share, publish, it then, yes, OK, create link. And here it goes. It's going to create a link for you. And I'll just show you what we can do. And then I'll finish with this video. Okay, almost done. Like I mentioned earlier, the, the more detail, the more stuff you put into these things, the longer it takes just to generate the link. But once you've got that link, it remains the same. Okay, It's just that each time you go back in and ever edit it, you'd have to click the update button again. Right, if I click on there and say copy. Okay, So I'll go back to my main page. Uh, here's the page that I was creating in the first of these little videos. And if I say, right, uh, where's that lovely glide thingy? Right, on the glide, let me just add in a video. Click there. I'll post in the video there and say save. Ah, oh, it's, uh, uh, um, I don't know what happened. I just haven't given it enough time for it to save all of that. Because the, the actual image of the front page of the video should be showing there. So it's, I'm just trying to be a bit too quick and flash with this now. Um, once it's actually saved and it's ready, that would show you as the video there. So it's fantastic. Look, you can just add what you like. You add more text, buttons, videos. Buttons would be, say, for example, if you wanted to link to an external website. Um, so maybe it's your trust. So you can put the, the title of it here, you know, my trust or whatever, put the full URL in and you decide whether you want this image here called button. Do you want it on the left, in the centre or over to the right? OK, and then press save and it will put that button in. So as soon as somebody clicks the button, it'll then take them to a new browser and open up that page. And that's it. 
click that button and you're back to all your originals. And I won't want to keep these now, so I can just go there and say delete. Okay, it's asking me if I want to delete them and I can clear them out of my folders. And it's as simple as that. Have fun. Okay, bye.